All right, the Barnstable Historical Commission is meeting on Tuesday, July 18th, 2023. Um, just had to hit a button here. Uh, we have real time access applicants and their, rep their representatives and individuals are required entitled to appear before Barnstable Historical Commission uh, through X and you may access that through a link of uh, town of Barnstable dash us dot zoom dot us j eight six nine one three nine zero six eight three zero sorry at the end or by phone which is eight 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 four seven five four four nine nine this is being recorded and will be televised via channel 18 and can be seen uh, online at channel 18 website, streaming 85.townofbarnstable.us slash cable cast public site. Members of the public, wish, public wishing to review plans and applications prior to the meeting are instructed to contact the planning and development department, Erica Brown, by calling 508 8624787 or emailing erica.brown at town.barnstable.ma.us. And so I guess we'll first call to order with a roll call. Uh, Marilyn Fifield. Here. Okay. Uh, George Jessup. Not here. Cheryl Powell. In here. Nancy Clark. Here. Jack K. Here. And Barbara, how do you say your last name, Barbara? DiBiase. DiBiase. And you apparently are here. I am here. OK. Uh, and Fran Parks, you are here as a uh, member of the public? Or Fran? Maybe she stepped out of the room. So we'll continue. Um, notice of recording. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast on channel 18 in accordance with MGL chapter 30A subset 20. I must inquire whether anyone is taping this meeting and to please make their presence known. Hearing no one. Um, acting under the provisions of the code of the town of Barnstable. SS 112-1 through 112-7, the Historical Commission will hold a public hearing on the following applications. The following applications have been determined significant and were referred to a public hearing, but on our agenda, I see that election of officers is coming first. Is that, it's, that's what's written on the agenda. Should you can start? change it to wherever you need it as long All as right. we uh, can I make a suggestion so that sure. we're picking up our um, our applicants? Would anyone object to us taking care of our applicants first? So they, uh, I mean, Nancy, you do responded job chairing. I, I don't see why we couldn't do that. This, but it's how others feel as well. Just simply so they don't have to wait through through, the, through this. How does everyone else feel? Would you like to have the election of officers? First, if so, say I, and I'll do a roll call. Uh, Marilyn Fifield. Marilyn? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, George, uh, no, nope, not George. Cheryl Powell. I'd like to wait and to attend to our applicants first, please. Nancy Clark? Nay. Jack K. No. And Barbara DiBiase. Close enough, nay. <laughs> okay. okay, so we will have it now. Oh, okay. Right? I think, but can we just- make Oh, you sure? want, um, okay. I should make that clear. Um, which one was it? I think everyone, you wanted it right now. No. Sure. No. Okay, so I'm no. correct in what I just said. Um, he may have so it, it is going to, the election will be now because we have, everyone wanting it now yes. except for cheryl okay that's so you, not what i voted for okay <laughs> let me do this I again to have it later 
I want to just clarify if anyone else thought that the nay meant no, not have it now to speak up. Otherwise, it is what I thought no meant have it later. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, uh, pardon, pardon me. Sure. <laughs> Madam <laughs> Vice Chair. Uh, Jessica Rocchersetti. Um, I think someone should read the motion that was voted on. Oh, now I will happily do that since I suggested it, if that's okay. Okay. The motion that we tend to our applicants first and have the elections after the applicants have been dealt with, where a yay, a yay vote will be, a, a, a nay vote will be, no, we will not do it until after the applicants. So a nay means after. Not now, but after the applicants. And again, I second that, Nancy Clark. Now. Okay, so I see Elizabeth uh, Jenkins shaking her head. Elizabeth, maybe you can clarify it because Nancy Shoemaker actually made the motion, but go ahead. Thank, thank you, Councilor Raptor Setti. So just a note, I mean, the chair is free, the acting chair is free to take agenda items out of order. Um, I took that as just a poll of the members to see if they were okay. Thus, I don't think it needs a formal motion or a vote. The way yeah. I understood it, Nancy, is if you, you were just seeking consensus that it was okay to move it to the end of a meeting and the nay was um, signifying that folks did not, not want it first, but wanted it at the end. So I heard unanimous consensus to move uh, to move the agenda item to the end of the meeting. The okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. So let's move on to our applications. Uh, the first one is George Torbay, and that's 70 Ocean Avenue, Hyannis, map 288, parcel 182 dash slash, I'm sorry, 005, built in 1916 and not inventoried. Uh, their, their application has a description of partial demolition, replace the sunroom windows and doors with Marvin windows and doors to match, Portico modification will have new trim and copper roof, front steps to be resurfaced with bluestone and traditional brick. Permits for window replacements, siding, trim, and roofing were previously approved. Uh, that's the end of the application, but I, I hope we get some explanation of the previously approved. So um, we have uh, our applicant here. George. Yes. You oh you're muted, George. Excuse right. me. Yes, thanks for having me. I'm George. Nice to meet everybody. So we would like to have uh your application up on the screen and explain what you are planning to do on your structure. Sure. Um, hope everyone got a chance to read my cover letter. I'm actually really pleased to present today. Um, essentially, I'd really like to keep the original elements of the home and keep it historically accurate. Um, I did get a, a wonderful architect uh, from Leslie Brahini, um, which is out of New Jersey. They do a lot of colonial renovations. And uh, essentially, <clears throat> I'm doing the roof, replacement roof, uh, Marvin windows and doors, as you said, and uh, trim, new trim around the windows, uh, pretty much uh, historically accurate. And um, again, I uh, definitely wanted to keep the historical accuracy and elements of the home. Um, and uh, we did pull permits and get those approved for uh, windows, door, the uh, windows, uh, front door, although we're not doing the front door, I'm actually keeping the original front door. We're going to rehab that beautiful old front door as opposed to replacing it. We're even keeping the side lights. Needs a lot of work, but we think we can get it done. I have a great carpenter. Um, and as far as the sunrooms go, we're not changing the size at all but um, they are rotten and leaking. One of them is in really bad shape with broken glass. And uh, given design requirements, my architect kept them very close to what they were now, but framed them out a little bit differently. Traditional and historic, but um, 
structured them so they meet the current wind design uh, standards. So the structural engineer uh, and the architect both approved that. Um, what else can I answer for you? Um, other <clears throat> comments by anybody on the board before we, I, I think we probably do have a lot of comments. Now the, the roof right now is not copper. The roof on the home is not copper. No, only the the future portico is going to have a copper roof. Uh, but the the roof or copper flashing, but the roof uh, is asphalt roof. It's uh, actually already been replaced, and it's like a charcoal black. And it's going to be a white home. Traditionally, it was white, so we're going to keep it white. So it's going to have. Uh, it's actually going to have these beautiful shunk functioning shutters by Timberlane traditional shutters. They're actually going to function, which is uh, amazing. And uh, they're gonna have the uh, traditional window sills as well. So the current ones that were on the home, too many of them were broken and rotten to be, to be saved. So I'm getting new ones that are gonna be wood, which are pretty, pretty amazing to have. They're not gonna be the generic ones. So the roof is asphalt. Mm -hmm. okay. Members of the commission, comments, questions? I think you, Marilyn. <laughs> Go ahead. This is what Nancy Clark. I have questions about that you keep talking about. There'll be changes that'll be appropriate, uh, but to the sunroom, could you go into that in more uh, depth, please? Sure. So the sunrooms now, have a single door. They're not changing in size at all, but there's a single door entrance on the side. Somebody, right. some previous, a previous owner didn't, um, they replaced the sunroom glass on, if you're facing the home, the right side has these old vinyl sliders that are not oh. active. And someone put them in there. I don't know why they would do that. Just giant eight foot sliders. They definitely don't meet the wind code. Um, th they're all leaking and they weren't installed correctly according to my contractor and architect. But the, uh, the, the more historic side with the beautiful glass, single pane glass, th that's unfortunately in terrible condition. Uh, one of the panels was leaking and broken, but we're keeping it very similar to what you're seeing there, except uh, again, with the wind design, they're framing it out with the hurricane clips. And uh, yeah, just like she's got up on the uh, screen there, you see the nice uh, trim detail and profiles with the giant Marvin windows with the correct spacer bars and grids, which will match the windows and uh, my brother's in wheelchair, he lives with me part time. So we thought it would be nice to have the double door entrance rather than the single door. So both sunrooms will actually match when we're done rather than the way it is now where someone, a previous owner had replaced all the sunroom glass with, um, you know, essentially just, you know, it looks okay for some folks, but I don't think it's historically accurate and neither did the architect. So. Both sides will match. And really there's a trim difference to what you're seeing now, which I think is more historic, historically accurate the way we've designed it here in these plans. But we also have the double door, which I think not only um, does it look nicer, but gives us easier access uh, for my brother who's in a wheelchair, but also to bring in furniture and you know just to get in and out of the house a little bit easier because that's actually acting as the main entrance because it's by the driveway. Correct. Yeah, that makes absolute sense. And, and uh, uh, I, I had another question about the sunrooms. You, you, do the windows have the ability to have screens or are they just gonna bake in the summer? No, the windows have the ability to have screens actually. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sunrooms get really hot as it stands, but I think, because there are Marvin windows and doors, our hope is when we open up the, the living room doors into the sunrooms, we think some of it, because it's gonna be, you know, 
um, insulated now and and uh, installed correctly, we think they'll stay cooler or warmer depending on the season, the way that we're going to have them as opposed to the way they are now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Other questions from the board? Hearing none, right. I would like to open it for public opinion. Anybody here from the public? Erica, do you see anyone? Madam Vice Chair, I don't see anyone at this time raising their hands. Councilor uh, Rep Garcetti seems like she has a comment. I, I, I would uh, like to ask through the chair, or, or do you have any recent photographs of the site? Hmm. The photographs you were showing us are 2014. And I actually drove by that property the other day and it didn't look quite like it does in the photograph. So I wondered if the applicant had any recent images of what's been done on the property. Thank you. Yeah, um, that's a great question. So as I mentioned, and thanks for driving by, I think you, I think you folks will really love the way the finish will be. Um, but the new siding is up. And the, the folks before me, as I'd mentioned, I think um, for some reason they put vinyl siding over that old cedar siding. Um, so what you're seeing now when you drove by is the new six inch lap siding. And the six inch siding I know is accurate historically because inside the sunroom where some of the um, actual wood material was protected up against the wall at six inches. So I matched that to the exterior. Um, and although it has to be painted white, that's what you're seeing. It looks like a, a maybe almost like a primer brownish material. That material is called duration. Um, it acts like wood when you cut it. It looks like wood when it's painted, but it's impervious to the insects and some of the other elements, um, but is quite historically accurate. So. That's from a company called Duration. So it does have to be painted white. Um, the Marvin windows have been installed on the home. Um, we are keeping that original molding all the way around the home, of course. I would never get rid of that. I, I refer to it as the dental work because it looks like dental work. Uh, the crown molding almost all the way around the, the roof line. Um, so definitely gonna keep the original elements of the home. Uh, so I can, I can upload some pictures now and send them to um, Erica's email, or I don't know how to, I can probably do that now, right? Through my own account here with Zoom. Let's could he, would he be able to share screens with us? What, what, what uh, actually, Jessica, Erica, if either of you could, one of you to probably best answer that. Uh, I've made it so that George can share your screen. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm on my iPhone, so done that on Zoom. Uh, I wonder if I could just send someone a quick email. I have a couple of great photos that will show the profile of the home uh, from the street. Let me grab my iPhone here, everyone. Send them to Erica? Erica? Yeah, you can send them to me, George. Erica, is that you? Yes, that's me. Oh, okay, it's nice to put a face to the name. I know we've been, <laughs> okay. Let me do that really fast. We're having our meditation moment, right? Yeah. Thanks for your patience with me. 
All right. Erica, those should be coming into your inbox any second. So those are the new windows that were installed. You see the grids by Marvin, which the architect thought Marvin windows looks the most historically accurate. Um, I tend to agree, especially on these nice colonials. Um, and that, that grayish looking material, that's the six inch uh, siding. It's smooth. And uh, when it's painted, it looks just like cedar, but it's impervious and it's got a 20 year warranty. Um, it's made by a company called Duration. A lot of the architects like it um, because of how it holds up to especially New England weather. Um, but it looks, acts, and um, feels like wood. It's uh, pretty incredible stuff. Um, I'm pretty traditional as it stands with, with uh, real estate. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm obviously using the red brick, bluestone. Uh, I like everything to stay the way it is. I'm not doing anything to the interior except for the windows. Um, so I think you're really going to love the way the sunrooms come out. It was I insisted on having it uh, traditional and historic looking, and um, an architect really appreciated that as well. So these windows were installed already. Yes, we the the contractors that I hired um, applied for a window permit, uh, not sunroom, but the windows and um, roofing. So you see that new roof on there now. Um, you see that that uh, that um, I call it the dental work molding all around. That's original to the home. That needs a little bit of repair, but we're definitely keeping it. It's I think it's beautiful. Um, so the windows have been replaced in the home, but not the sunrooms. And then the front door, side lights and transom above, I believe that that's original to the home. That's why I think it's a good idea that the, the portico be replaced and be protected um, because, you know, it's very old and it needs, we have to take all of that off the front door and it needs a lot of uh, re refurbishment. So we're going to be doing that. Um, so I'm really glad I'm keeping all of that. Um, the windowsills have like, if you see the, the flashing, there's a little bit of copper flashing there on the top of the windows uh, that they're installing, which I think it gives it a nice touch. And um, yeah, keeping it pretty traditional and similar to the way it was, just bringing it back to its former glory. Other comments? This is Nancy. Here. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> this is Nancy Clark again. I just yeah. wanted to put in that I very much appreciate that the door is being rehabbed and the side lights rehabbed rather than replaced. It's uh, it's an important feature of that particular house. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And were the windows that were replaced? Did that already go through the board and? No. Not that we had a hearing, but somebody okayed it, Erica? Usually so the permit came through back in March. Um, when I reviewed the permit, there was only window replacements, roof, and uh, siding in which uh, there were no structural changes. So I had approved it at that point for no structural changes. So it was approved, whether, okay. okay. I believe comments? that as long as it's like for like, the clerk can, can take care of that without any other supervision, as long as the windows are being replaced with the same fenestration, everything the same, then they, then there's no problem. So I think you did right. Cheryl, I agree with Nancy. That's the way I've always understood it as well. Marilyn here. Yes, Marilyn. Was, re was not replacing original windows. That's one question. And also, what's the date on this house again? 
16. Okay, thank you. And then the other thing I would say, uh, I hope it wasn't replacing original windows, but I do appreciate uh, especially the shutters. I think we lose more shutters than we gain. So I appreciate the fact that they're uh, going out of their way to improve upon the shutters and that they'll even actually be uh, functional. So thank you for that. Absolutely. And the, key, and the dentals in place is appreciated too. Absolutely. Yeah. I have the same opinion, and if, I, if is it okay if I comment, but the the windows that were on that house were absolutely not original. There were um, very inexpensive vinyl windows that were warped and broken. They absolutely had to be replaced. If they were original wood windows, that would have been really cool, um, but unfortunately not. Thank you. Sure. All right, are we ready for someone to make a motion? Happily do that if you wish. Don't do I have to I have to close public hearing first, correct? Yes. So I am requesting to close public hearing. We have a vote. Marilyn Fifield. Yes. Uh, Cheryl Powell. Cheryl. I did say yes. Sorry. Oh, we didn't hear it. Uh, Nancy Clark. Yes. Fran. I'm sorry. Jack Clark. Jack K. Yes. And Barbara, I'm going to say, it, I hope right, DiBiase. Very well, yes. OK, and I vote yes, too. So now that uh, we have closed our hearing, do we have anyone who would like to make a nomination? Happily do that. Um, uh, a motion, yes. Uh, so is that all right? You happy for me to go ahead? Yes, please. OK. So with regard to Turbe, I'm sorry if I'm butchering the sound of that. Uh, George Turbay, 70 Ocean Avenue, Hyannis, Map 288, Parcel 182, backslash 005, Build 1916, not inventoried, with regard to a partial demolition to replace sunroom windows and doors, no elevation or size changes, with Marvin windows and doors to match. Portico modification will have a new trim and copper roof. Front steps to be resurfaced with bluestone and traditional brick. Permits for window replacement, siding, trim, and roofing were previously approved. Motion one. I move that after review and consideration of public testimony, the application and associated materials, the significant building at 70 Ocean Avenue, Hyannis, is a preferably preserved significant building. Second. I'll second. Oops. Yes, I'll second. That's Nancy Clark is seconding. Okay, and I vote will impose, impose an 18 month delay, and nay will not impose an 18 month delay. So we'll start with Marilyn Fifield. No. Uh, Cheryl Powell. Yeah. Nancy Clark. Nay. Jack K. Nay. Barbara DiBiase. Nay. And I vote nay also. Uh, Cheryl, would you like to make? Absolutely. So I shall go on. Let me find that place. I am nay. Okay, that opens up. So I'm, whoops, I move that in accordance with section 112-3F, the Barnstable Historical Commission determined that the partial demolition of the building located at 70 Ocean Avenue, Hyannis, is not detrimental to historical, cultural, and architectural heritage or resources of the town. Second. I'll second that. Okay. Um, I'm missing that page, which I know, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm missing that page too. I don't think it was on, but an I determines the demolition single is not detrimental. It's it's written out in a sentence. I vote determines that the partial de demolition of the single family structure is not detrimental, and a no, uh, nay, uh, no demolition uh, detrimental, and no demolition of things. So basically. Uh, and I is not detrimental and they would be it is detrimental. Is that right, Erica? Yes, that's right, Cheryl. Okay, so we'll have a roll call again. How about uh, Barbara DiBiase? Aye. Jack K. Aye. Nancy Clark. Aye. Cheryl Powell. Aye. Marilyn Fifield. Aye. And Nancy Shoemaker, aye. So you are um, 
all set to continue with your uh, working on the house. And Jessica, you're pleased to see that the color that you're seeing now is not going to be there soon. It's going to be painted. I, I appreciate that. And I appreciate him showing the, the work that he's done. I know it's quite an undertaking. It's a very prominent home there. Mm -hmm. and I'm sure it'll look lovely when it's complete. Thank you. Property. Thank you. Yeah. Again, thank you, George. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I think you guys are going to love the result. Have a great day. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Okay. So we have our only other applicant, which is Olga Voronina. And the address is 11 Red Lily Pond Road, Centerville, map 227, parcel 043, built 1948. And it is not inventoried. Uh, partial demolition, the demolition of enclosed three-story porch, including two walls and a flat roof. The house will be lifted and placed on a new foundation with the pre-existing roof height preserved. Construct addition to the rear of the cottage. Addition will include steep roofs, double hung windows with divided lights, shingles, and clapboard. So could we have the applicant make themselves known and explain a few things to us? Yes, of course. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Hello, everybody. Would you like uh, the drawings and application in general? There we go. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Erica. Uh, so as was just mentioned, the house was built in 1948. So it just turned 75 years old. Happy birthday, the house. Um, the house is located, uh, um, it abuts the Red Lily Pond uh, along its west property line. Uh, so the Red Lily Pond is, uh, um, goes into Lake Elizabeth and then enter Centerville River. So this is a bird's eye view of the house uh, from Google Maps. So you can see how much uh, greenery and trees we have around, and you can have a, get a general sense of the neighborhood where most houses are fairly large. Uh, this is the view from the opposite side from the pond. So below where the red arrow is, there is a red lily pond road, and the house is uh, practically invisible. Um, next, please. So the really only unobstructed view of the house is directly from the Red Lily Pond Road. Uh, this picture is taken at the beginning of the driveway. Um, so this is a, an appropriate distance for the picture to give you a general sense uh, of what the house uh, looks like. Next, please. So this is a close up. A picture. Uh, the house has structural issues. Uh, at first, it has concrete block foundation, which doesn't go far enough into the ground, so it doesn't extend down four feet, which is required by modern codes to prevent the foundation of freezing and the ground heaving. And so the house is all uh, crooked and the foundation is cracked. Because of that, uh, the house also has um, undersized floor joists. There is no appropriate support in the middle of the house. The main girder is just sits on a pile of bricks with nothing underneath. And uh, there is no basement. There is just crawl space, which is less than two feet high. So doing any work from underneath and repairing this house is not really uh, feasible. Next, please. This is the rear view of the house. Uh, so you can see there are these four uh, vinyl gliding windows. Uh, looks a little bit like a trailer. We believe it used to be a porch that the previous owner has uh, enclosed, but there is no insulation or heat. And the roof, uh, the roof is flat over this area, and it is so low that uh, an average person of a five foot seven inches height cannot see 
uh, out these windows because the top of the windows is lower than an average person uh, eyesight line. Um, what else can I tell you about the house? So th this is this is pretty much pretty much it. We the house has been in one family from the day it was built. We are the second owners, and we've been here for thirteen years now. Uh, next, please. Um, so we are looking to repair the house and also build an addition behind the house. Uh, the zoning for our lot is uh, called Craigville Beach District, Centerville River North Bank overlay. So this is one of the most restrictive, restricted uh, zonings that we have. And to start, if you would like to do an addition, you cannot demolish the house uh, because uh, only, the only demolition amount that is allowed is 20% of the ex existing exterior walls and 50% of the existing roof. And overall, a project is uh, meeting all of the zoning requirements. I'll go further into details. Uh, and we're not asking for variance. We're not breaking any rules to try to do what that we're doing. So on this side plan, the green uh, box is the existing house minus uh, the porch and the red uh, striped um, area is the area of the porch that we are planning to use as a transition between the old house and the addition. Next, please. So these are the uh, wall and roof demolition areas. Blue is where the walls are and uh, orange is where the roof is. The square footage of the demolition according to the zone and rules is not, does not count, but what counts is the square footage of the surface of the wall areas and we're meeting that. Um, and then the old house will be lifted and um, placed on a new proper foundation. Next please. The height of the house will remain exactly the same as it was before. So on this diagram, the yellow color represents the area, that porch that uh, is, we would like to demolish. Uh, next, please. Yeah, and this is the facade where you can see the demolition better, um, including the chimney. Next, please. Uh, Okay, uh, and so now the gray area is the addition that we're proposing to build behind the old house. And uh, we use design wise, we are using the former porch area as a transitional space between the old house and the new house. We're making sure that the addition can coexist reasonably well designed wise and does not overpower the house. We're building it behind the house while we have space on the side and in front, we putting it in the rear. And I marked up the survey lot with uh, the green color. This is where all the existing trees are is surveyed. So as you can see the uh, house, um, the only the front uh, of the house is really visible from the street. Uh, from the pond side, we have a green buffer. Uh, we're 100 feet, we're not allowed to do anything. And on the other side of the pond, there is the same situation for the abutters. So those views are well protected. Um, next, please. Um, you don't have to read all of this. This is just to give you a general sense for how many zone and rules uh, we uh, any project in our zone needs to meet in order to be accepted. And this goes beyond the usual side front yard setbacks and usual um, 
coverage, building coverage, hill coverage, uh, the roof uh, slopes uh, are regulated, the number of dormers are regulated. The building height has to be measured six foot away from the lowest point of the addition. And because our house is on the slope, we're doing that. So there is lots of uh, check and balances that kind of control the design uh, already. Flat roofs are basically allowed in small amounts. We're not having any, we're not having any decks. So we're trying to be um, uh, as reasonable as possible. In terms of the sizes, so the heated area of the existing house is 612 square feet. That's the living area. The, uh, the porch uh, that we are removing is 264 square feet. And so the total of everything is 876 square feet. Um, we do need an addition because after being here for 13 years, um, our family just have no room to, to use the property. And so while fixing the old house, we would like the opportunity to use the opportunity to expand within um, the rules. Uh, next, please. Okay, so this is the main elevation of um, the house together with the addition as it will be seen from Red Lily Pond Road. Uh, so we have fairly um, steep slopes for the roof, uh, like nine and a half at 12. Um, and um, the finishes are traditional. We're using both shingles and clamp boards. Uh, our, the old house actually has two layers of siding. Uh, so under the shingles that you saw in the picture, there are some clamp boards. Uh, so we're using what we know about the house to kind of preserve the appearance. Another thing that we're doing, we are um, breaking up masses and introducing uh, smaller volumes with different roof heights, um, which it tend to transition you to the higher area behind the old house, which has a second floor and the, um, but it's it's pretty much limited and much it is much smaller than uh, the first floor. We using um, traditional window styles um, with um, uh, well, there are no true divided lights these days, but there are simulated divided lights with uh, spacers in between the mountains that basically give you the same feeling. Our current windows are vinyl as replaced by a previous owner with a mountain in between glass, which is doesn't look that great. Um, so uh, next, please. So this is that same drawing just highlighted for you where the old house is. Um, we did introduce a couple of um, design elements to make the whole composition and the old house look um, a little bit prettier where it is. So we we have a shutters in the middle when you took an it, it's a artificial window and we introduced the gates on the left where it's a master bedroom having windows to the street is really difficult so we move towards something which which as you know reminiscent of a, a carriage house maybe a little bit um next please So this is the view from basically the same point, the picture um, that we showed you from the driveway. And this is the rendering of um, the proposed house renovation and the addition. So um, now you probably can see, better see what we've done uh, in order to break up uh, the mass. Also, the zoning rules require that the second floor has to be offset 
on two sides from the first floor by at least two feet. This is another rule that kind of forces uh, the enforces the roofs to be uh, uh, sip to not have flat roofs, and also reduces uh, the square footage of the second floor. We've met this requirement. We the we actually um, how do I explain this? So we could have expanded the second floor over that volume on the right, which is a living room, and even over the old house. We haven't done that. We kept the second floor really small in order to be able to go forward with uh, this design. So the whole composition uh, feels reasonable. Uh, uh, it is not overwhelming. Um, next, please. So this is the first floor plan. Um, the old house is uh, is the lower left part, and the addition is the upper right. Basically, there are two boxes, um, and where you can see the stair, this is where the uh, the porch used to be. Next, please. So this is uh, the second floor plan. Uh, there are open areas uh, around the stairs, uh, two bedrooms upstairs. And um, we could have extended the, uh, the, extended the uh, living area on the second floor above the first floor on two sides. And we haven't done that. Next, please. So this is the west elevation. This is the point side elevation. Um, the windows remain traditional and uh, there are uh, glass sliding doors, neutral, nothing, um, nothing eccentric. Uh, well, nobody's going to see that um, anyway. Next, please. Um, so this this is one of the side building elevation. This is a north elevation, I believe. And next, please. This one is the west elevation. Um, that's pretty much it. What I wanted to share. Um, questions, please. Nancy, how did you know? <laughs> yes, I do have two questions. One of them is, it looks as though you're removing the chimney that's there. Yes. Are you on putting another chimney in? No. What was that chimney used for? So there is a fireplace that is actually on the porch. It's like an outdoor fireplace on what used to be a porch. Uh -huh. And now it's enclosed. So that massive chimney is for the fireplace, which is uh, largely <laughs> outside of the house, was outside of the house. And so you're using just indoor heat of some sort. How are you heating? So the, the porch is not heated at all. The main house used to have heat. Then it broke down and we had difficulties replacing it in that very narrow crawl space. And so right now we don't have any heat. It's been several years. So we can only use the cottage from end of May through October, typically. And we were planning the renovation and hoping that to do everything at once and install new new heating system for both the old part of the house and the addition. Okay, and that's going to be just from the basement going out outside the, the, the to vent? Or how is that going to vent? The heating system will probably vent through the basement wall, mm -hmm. uh, which is okay. like a typical modern system, heating system I vented uh, yes, through the basement I'm, wall, yeah. I'm aware, but at 75 years ago, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, that's the, right. But the, the vent the other... won't be visible on the main elevation, that's for sure. The, the mm -hmm. vent 
won't be visible from the street. No, that wasn't the, the real question is when you take a chimney out of a house, that chimney is often part of the story of the house. And so it's not necessarily a good thing to remove. The other thing that is a really major thing for me is it looks as though the, how, how many square feet, I think you said it was 1800 square feet now, how many square feet is it with the addition? Uh, so the whole, the whole house. So the whole, the existing house it is 876 feet. Okay. We also require to add to that square feet a shed that is on the property because according to the zoning rules, every, even the shed counts toward the square footage. So it is 128 square feet. So we're removing the shed. And uh, so together the house, uh, uh, the old house plus the shed plus the new addition are 2,109 square feet. Uh, according to the zoning rules, uh, we can put an idea, uh, put, uh, um, we can have 2,119 square feet. So we are within the zoning regulations. We're not asking for any variance. Uh, thank you. That's not necessarily within the historic uh, regulations, but I appreciate your having that information. Any other comments from the board? Um, Cheryl here. Okay. Um, it, it's not a huge issue, but uh, I think Nancy and I, other Nancy and I, uh, Nancy Clark and I share uh, a uh, passion for the chimney story part of a house. Um, just putting in my two cents on that, but uh, I'm not too focused on it, but I, I, I do share her passion with keeping that part of the story, if at all possible and when at all possible. And it is possible, I think Jack could tell us better than anyone else, but um it's possible to put on a chimney just on the roof, right, Jack? That looks like a real chimney. A, a faux chimney? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. yeah. Hi, Jessica, well, I've sort of zoomed into a meeting, but sure. I'm can you? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Jack. No, it's, it's very possible to do that. Um, with modern materials, there could be a stimulated chimney and you could use it for vent venting bathrooms and mm. venting and heating systems. And so you'd have a lot less penetrations in the roof, like little pipes and stuff sticking up, but uh, that is possible. Uh, Jack knows that on the HHDC, we've had false chimneys, uh, you know, as part of a, some of the, um, agreements uh false sometimes they're necessary sometimes they're not but it's uh they 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 tend to not be too tedious on putting arranging for that but i don't know what the applicant they would be happy with it yeah olga this is just this is something to think about and we would appreciate your giving that some serious thought mm -hmm. Other One thing you don't need to worry about is chimneys aren't counted in the height of the building. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Although in the plan, even constructing a four chimney, that will be uh, fairly uh, difficult I'll show in that same location where it is now. Uh, Erica, could you please go to that 3D drawing? I'll try to explain if possible. Uh, back, yeah, right here. So the chimney, if we were to put a, a four chimney there where it used to be, 
will be in that valley mm. on the other side of the house and where we're trying to have a small second floor. So in that valley, we already trying to put a cricket in there, try to, trying to find a collection of snow, uh, ice, and also there is a huge oak in front of the property, which we are preserving for sure. And that oak is going to put lots and lots of leaves every fall in that area. Mm -hmm. And so then introducing another vertical element that we have to flush and put crickets around, and it will, frankly, it will just be in front of the windows of the second floor. It's just mm -hmm. um, difficult to um, have it. Another thing is uh, the modern chimney, you can put a four chimney, but if it is used for any kind of ventilation, it will have to be taller than the second story uh, roof in order to vent properly. So that might not be a very good look. Olga, from what if you, you just said, I, can, I understand. <laughs> I don't see how you could put a chimney in. But Nancy Clark, go ahead, sorry. If you used it on the second floor, uh, as, as we're looking at the house now, it could be on the second floor on the left side mm -hmm. and it wouldn't be blocking anything. And are you, so are you proposing to create a box directly on the roof? So yes, the low it's chimney low, on the... But it won't be, are you saying you're proposing it to be on the new house? I'm just trying to understand where. where. I don't care where it is as long as it's there. Um, so, so you you would love the house to have any chimney anywhere uh, to have a, a reasonable cool. chimney. To have a reasonable chimney, it doesn't have to be on the old part. It can be on the new part. Whatever you come up with with your architect is just fine. Um, can I just add something there? I I think when we say anywhere, that kind of possible difficulties. I think I, I, I think Nancy, you actually said it, correct me if I'm wrong, you were saying on the left hand side of the, of the taller part of the structure. Yeah. Um, I thought you said that. I just want to make sure I understood you. I think that is the obvious place. I agree with you, but I would I would caution against wording that says anywhere. Um, um, because then you don't want to destroy the the overall impact of the structure. Um, Very good point. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? I'd like to open for public hearing. Anyone from the public want to um, ask questions, give opinions? Nobody's here. Erica, you don't see anybody? Yes, uh, uh, this is this is oh. David Alworthy. I'm uh, the next door neighbor. Okay. Great. Yeah, please Hello? speak. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, I just want to uh, say that uh, I am delighted with seeing the, uh, the structure of the new home. That's the first time I've seen it. I know. Olga and I were going to take a look at it in another week or so, but uh, I thought I would join in in the meeting with with the hopes of seeing the structure. Uh, as Olga had mentioned, most of the homes, including my home, are much larger in the area than the cottage, um, and it will add a tremendous uh, uh benefit of upgrading uh the whole neighborhood uh and as far as the chimney goes um i i understand the what the historical board uh has in mind when they review homes but um uh, 
I'm not even sure the exact age of my home, but I know it's probably pretty close to the 75 years. Most of the chimneys or a lot of the chimneys nowadays aren't even usable. Uh, you, when you put a gas furnace in, you're running a pipe all the way up the chimney and sticking out of the chimney. So, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, I don't see it. This is my personal uh, view. I have two uh, extensions from my chimney. So to look at it and say, oh, that's a beautiful traditional chimney. It isn't any longer because of the new uh, ways of us heating our homes and uh, gas fireplaces versus the wooden fireplaces and so on and so forth. So uh, that's just my, my take on, on the, uh, the need for a chimney. I just want to say that we're, uh, we're delighted that uh, Ogre has put so much uh, work into designing a beautiful home. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public who would like to speak? Give you a moment, no? I don't see anyone at this time raising their hand. So I guess we will close the public hearing and back to our commission. Anybody wanna make a motion or other comments? Can I make a suggestion that we ask the, before we make a motion so that we know what we're making a motion on, might I suggest respectfully that we ask the applicant how she feels about the proposals for the chimney because that would be something that would be added to a motion possibly or possibly not we might want to make it as a recommendation yeah okay do you want a motion with the recommendation or but then it would apply as is but it's only a recommendation or do you want to ask if she would like to include that <clears throat> anybody else on this I saw Nancy's talks. I, 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 I consider it essential that there be a chimney. It is not essential that it come out of the old part of the house, although that is certainly a possibility if it were on the far left, um, so that it didn't have to clear uh, visually. But I think that it would be better to put a chimney on the new building on the second floor. Uh, and if you use it to vent things, fine. If you use it just because it looks like there's a chimney, that's also fine. So Nancy, are you asking if we ask the applicant if she if she'd be okay with that? Yes, I'm asking if she would consider putting that up. Um, uh, it sounds like you are about to make that a condition. And in that case, yes, we would consider uh, adding a chimney to the design. Uh, I hear the proposal about adding a chimney to the second floor. Um, so we can definitely do that. I just on the spot without thinking about it, I'm having a hard time committing to exactly on what because there are so many roofs as you so exactly where because <laughs> exactly how high uh but that can be done and arranged we just need to figure out from the architectural and also functional point of view because we want to make sure the you know uh, valleys don't collect leaves and the roofs don't leak so but that that can be done so Nancy, would you like to put, put, I would suggest that we point out where to be so it doesn't end up with an anywhere? Well, I, I think since we're asking for something that the owner wasn't looking for, and I think she would probably put it where we're suggesting on the left side of the uh, new addition. Um, and because Nancy Clark has said could go anywhere, I, I think we should leave it that to her, to the owner. Thank you. And just to add one more comment, please, if I may. Look, we, we've tried very hard to make the house 
look very good for the whole neighborhood, not only for us, just like David said. So we're not going to stick anything ugly <laughs> in the front slope of the house. We will make sure that the end result looks good. And I hope you can see it through the proposal of how we are approaching uh, working on this project. Madam Chair, can I make a suggestion that I go with the motion and put that in there then, please? All right. Go ahead, Cheryl. So I first want to say the commission is always very happy to see people the historic walk. We do understand that. It is appreciated. Thank you. So with regard to Veronina, Olga Ol Ol Veronina, 11 Red Lily Pond Road, Centerville, Map 227, Parcel 043, built 1948, not inventory. This is with regard to a partial demolition. The demo enclosed three demo enclosed three season porch, including two walls and flat roof. House will be lifted and placed on a new foundation with pre-existing roof height preserved. Construct addition to the rear of the cottage. Addition will include steep roofs, double hung windows, and divided lights, shingles, and clapboard. Uh, also to include the uh, chimney, false chimney, faux chimney. Uh, as it hopefully as it was directed on the top left of the chimney, but uh, for that to be determined. Uh, so I move that after review and consideration of public testimony, the application and associated materials, the significant building at 11 Red Lily Pond Road, Centerville, is a preferably preserved significant building. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Barbara has seconded. So uh, an I vote will impose an 18 month delay and an A vote will not impose an 18 month delay. So we have roll call, Marilyn Fifield. Aye. Cheryl Powell. Nay. Nancy Clark. Nay. Jack Clark. Jack, <laughs> I'm all right today. Jack K. Nay. And Barbara <laughs> DiBiase. Nay. And I vote nay also. All right, so going down to the nays, I move that in accordance with section 112-3F, the Barnstable Historical Commission determines that the partial demolition of the building located at 11 Red Lily Pond Road, Centerville is not detrimental to the historical, cultural, and architectural heritage or resources of the town. And I vote determines that the partial demolition of the single family structure is not detrimental. No demolition delay imposed. We do need a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Second. I'll second Nancy Clark. Jack K. Raises. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let me just repeat that an I vote determines that the partial demolition of the single family structure is not detrimental, no demolition imposed. Okay. Um, Barbara. Aye. Jack. Aye. Nancy Clark. Aye. Cheryl. Aye. Marilyn. Aye. Nancy Shoemaker, aye. So Olga, you have our um, approval and our recommendation, which is a little more than a recommendation. So please, you know, we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank so. you so much. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, we have um, others. And the first thing is the Community Preservation Committee update. Marilyn here. Marilyn, yeah. Uh, yesterday was the annual meeting, and uh, I was absent actually, but I watched on TV, and they did a great job and um, had presentations. One of which was um, from Tales of Cape Cod, which outlined the work they've done over the years on the old colonial courthouse using uh, community preservation funds along with state funds, and. Um, so that was the main historic preservation uh, aspect of it all. And then the uh, regular monthly meeting followed the annual meeting and there was no historic preservation um, aspect to that. So I think that's my report. All right. Uh, do we have any uh, announcements of upcoming historical events that are open to the public? Nobody? I might, as usual. <laughs> Uh, isn't that interesting? Uh, we have, let me think, where are they here? 
It's been a crazy day today. So, oh, here we go. Um, no. Oh, a couple of things. Stepping in for Fran, um, Swift used to be Swift's market. It's now Fancy's. I went to see them. Uh, I gave permission for them to repair a wall that got not just a wall, but part of the foundation uh, that got um, hit by a car and everything's just being replaced as is. So it's interesting to do those kinds of things. We have a couple of other things like that. Um, what I was going to mention, I don't see it on this paper here. Um, yes, okay. On August 4th, and this is not exactly historic except uh, the building is the 1717 Meeting House. The meeting is the event was put on by the 1717 Meeting House Foundation. It's going to be Friday, August 4th at 7 p.m. And it's going to be an incredible organist from Paris. He's come here before, I think it was 2018 or 19, Laurent Jacom. And he's doing from Samuel Barber back down to Mendelssohn and Cesar Franck and incredible uh, pianist. And of course, the Mander organ that was made in England and came here, I think in 2006. Um, it's to me, it's, it's history in the making whenever this organ has such an incredible uh, performer working with it. So again, that's Friday, August 4th at 7 p.m. And then Saturday, August 12th at 9 a.m., I'm probably telling you about something that's been sold out. I don't know if it is or not, but Sturgis, Sturgis Library is going to have Greg Williams, retired judge Greg Williams, uh, give a tour of Barnstable Village, basically on the mysteries and murder. If you all know Greg Williams, he, that tends to be his subject, but he's going to give an, a, an interesting angle to a historic tour of Barnstable Village. I'm sure it's going to end up at the jail. In fact, he's asked me to bring the key. Um, and include some of the interesting people who have spent a night or two in the old jail. So again, that one is August 12th, Saturday, 9 a.m., meeting at Sturgis Library, but you have to go to Sturgis Library's website and you have to apply for a spot, which there may or may not be one at this point. Anything else of anybody? Any other announcements? Uh, one. Oh, approval of minutes. Do we want to, is that? Yep. Go I ahead. don't want to hold off anybody. Um, oh, Historical Society of Santuit and Katuit, letter of support for historical artifact. Fran, are you here for that? Fran, no? I think she might have been. She uh, sent an email uh, about that uh, German uh, prisoner of war possibility with the uh, letter in the bottle. Yeah. And yeah. that's what this is for. She was wondering if we could get a uh, letter of support for uh to use uh for right. funds should i make a vote have a vote on that probably i um, move that we support this uh project with the german prisoners of war this is nancy clark second that. that's cheryl seconding that okay um barbara yes and nancy clark yes jack yes Carol? Yes. Carol, yes. Uh, Marilyn Fifield. Oh, yes. And I vote yes too. So that's great. That's I had no knowledge of of that there even was a prisoner camp so close. I did know about the um, training fields out there, but uh, fascinating. Our history, we keep opening doors that we haven't opened or have not opened in a while and finding such fascinating stories. It's really amazing. Um, okay, so now we have to get back, unless, am I stepping on anybody having another announcement? I actually did. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, isn't it. August 12th, the week of August 12th, isn't that um, Centerville Old Home Week? It certainly could be. I think it is. Yeah, okay. So that's another thing is Centerville's Old Home Week. Is it for the whole week or just for like Friday oh, or? Mm -hmm. Well, we need to all go to the Historical Society of Centerville's website to check it out. Okay. So we need to elect our officers. And do we have uh, anyone who would like to nominate someone as the chair of the Barnstable Historical Commission? 
Uh, I will reiterate, you know, Nancy Shoemaker, that I did call you, but uh, I personally think you'd make a great chair if you really could do it. You do a spectacular job. Thank I you. Nominate you, but I, you know, because I think I'm, really, I'm on seven boards, I, I can't, <laughs> and I'm still working full time. So thank you, but no. I'd like to have nominated you. I, I'd like to nominate someone. Uh, Oh, good. Can we have a discussion then? If anyone if oh. wants, you know, what they're looking for in that, or well, why don't we do nominations and then discuss? I suppose, right? Fine. Um, because I would like to nominate Nancy Clark as chair, if she's willing to do so. My only, com I like Nancy immensely. You, you did a great job, but you're also the only one that doesn't show up in, in we, we don't see a 90% of communication uh, according to all studies is nonverbal. Would you be willing to come back on and and appear with us as opposed to a name on a screen or a picture? About sure, that. if you wanna look at a head on a pillow, that works just fine. Yeah, Nancy has been visually there most of the time, yeah, so um, any other, Oh, we'll take you any way we can get you, Nancy. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, is there a second for that nomination? I would second that, of course. Hey, Jack Kay is giving us a second. Are there any other nominations? Well, no? I think you have to do the votes for one before you go for another. So, I'm sorry, you. I think you have to do the votes for one before you go for another. I would have nominated, oh. but I would I would wait till after this. All right, yeah, I'm just following my script here, but I think you're right. Um, so do, uh, I'll just start out with a yay that you would love to have Nancy Clark be our chair and nay or not. Barbara? Um, yeah, I, yes. Yeah, uh, Fran? Oh, Fran, I'm sorry. I'm back in the old days. Marilyn Fifield. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Cheryl? I'm going to abstain. Jack? Hi. And I, uh, Nancy, can I, I think you can vote. Yeah, uh, I'll vote aye. Okay, and I vote aye. So uh, we voted her in, right? Yes. Thank you very, very much for accepting this. The pay is so wonderful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I having to go to a few of the places and look at them, and uh, I've always admired Nancy and Fran's position as our chair. Uh, and in the past, good heavens. I mean, I've been on this board since mid-1990s. I was five years old then, of course. But, um, <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of work and for not, not a whole a whole lot of recognition and certainly no pay. So I, we appreciate it. Uh, so now we need to have an election of the vice chair. And do we have any nominations for the vice chair? Will you take, continue as vice chair? I nominate Nancy Shoemaker for vice chair. Second then. Um, I mean, I, I will if nobody else wants to do it. Um, I would second that nomination. I already did. Okay. Any other? This always this is any other nominations. So, okay, I don't hear others. So we'll do a roll call vote, and we'll start with Nancy Clark. Aye. And Barbara. Yes. Cheryl. Yes. Jack. Yes. Marilyn. Yes. All right. I guess you're stuck with me again for another whatever. <laughs> We have bullied you into the role, but we love yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, so now we have the clerk. And the clerk uh, has been Marilyn Fifield. And I will leave it at that. Does anybody have a nomination for the clerk of the Barnstable Historical Commission? I will nominate that uh, Marilyn continue if she will accept that position. A second? A second. Nancy Clark. Marilyn, are you willing to have more uh, excitement being the clerk? Yes, I guess so. Thank you. Okay. 
So we're going to vote again. Um, Cheryl. Aye. Jack. Aye. Barbara. Aye. Nancy Clark. Aye. Nancy Shoemaker. Aye. So don't forget, don't forget Marilyn. She gets to vote too. Marilyn, I'm sorry. You're in the That's dark. Okay. Yeah. How about right. I? Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Um, do we want to go through the approval of minutes? I don't. I think we do. There was there was a there was some that were um, the February ones that was uh, had a lot of red ink, <laughs> and I've I've put together something that I hope will take care of that red ink. Hmm. I think it's page. I don't know what it is. I printed had it printed out page six. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's it's I'm, the only page with a lot of red on it. I'm wondering <laughs> if we should. Um, approve the other minutes and only hold that one on till next month and i promise i will read it but i must admit i didn't oh no. okay so i mean it's not, that's up to everybody what do you think it's fine whatever that's fine i'd like to continue it as well don't you think madam chair we <laughs> could do the other four Pardon? yes that's fine it's yeah. fine go ahead you go ahead i'm i'm just sitting here i'm a vice i'm i'm in charge of vice now <laughs> I would also feel more comfortable on continuing this. Okay, what what we we have what minutes from three August, different yeah, August 16th, September 20th of 2022, the February one, which is being suggested to be put off another month, then May 16th of 2023 and June 20th of 2023. Uh, June is not on here. I don't think so. It's not on here. It's no, on just May. Just May 16th. All right. Okay. So, I think in, from the past that we have to make separate motions for each month. Mm -hmm. So I will take a motion. I move that we accept the minutes of August 16th, 2022. Do we have a second? Yeah. Thank you, Jay check okay are there any comments on that marilyn you've reviewed them i assume i assume too <laughs> if my name is at the end i did okay very good so are there any changes anyone wishes to make uh, there were changes i had for august 16 the 20th and i didn't bring them with me so i am not going to hold them up uh, but I will, because I don't have them with me, I will abstain from those two. But I'm fine with the May 16th. Okay, they're not significant changes. You, you're allowed, you're, you're we can. I, I don't want to hold them up any longer. But okay. Sorry. Okay, so we're voting on the August minutes. We have a, a motion, we have a second. We've had a little discussion. So now I have to go by uh, each person. So, Nancy. Shoemaker. Aye. Barbara de Blasio. De Biazzo. I'm sorry, Barbara. Can I say it once more? De Biazzi. De Biazzi. De Biazzi. Oh, your name. Oh, that's different. It's very pretty, but it's different. Thank De Biazzi. You. Okay. De Biazzi, right. Um, and I'm a yes vote. <laughs> okay. Cheryl Powell. I'm abstaining from that. Okay. Jack K. Aye. And Marilyn Fifield. Aye. And I also vote aye. Okay, I need the next set of minutes. That's September 20th. Would you like to make the motion? No, there's the two on the second one I'm going to abstain on because I don't have the change. I move that we accept the minutes of September 20th, 2022. Nancy Shoemaker. I have a second. I second that. Thank you, Jack. Any discussion? Anything that needs to be changed? Okay, let's move along to a vote then. Uh, Jack K. Aye. Uh, Marilyn Fifield. Aye. Barbara De DiBiazzo. DiBiazzi. De oh, sugar. DiBiazzi. 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 Um, I just lost my train of thought. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. That's because <laughs> I'm a klutz here. That's okay. Uh, That's all right. Okay, Cheryl, you, you were abstaining on this one? Correct. Okay. Uh, and Nancy Shoemaker? Aye. 
and I will vote aye also. Okay, next one. May 16th, 2023. We need a second. Well, it was just the uh, the date. I, I assume that I'll take that as a motion, I assume. I'll second yeah. that. Okay. And discussion on the May minutes. Seeing none, let put it to a vote. Um, Jack. Aye. Um, see, my phone is connected in there too. Cheryl. Aye. Uh, Marilyn. Aye. Nancy. Aye. And Nancy Clark votes aye also. Barbara, did you vote? I did not vote and oh. I will abstain because I wasn't here for that meeting. I apologize, Barbara. No problem. Okay. And I think we've got them all. Is that everything except February? You have to make a motion to continue the February one. Okay. Nancy, would you like to make that motion? I would be happy to. I would. I move that we, uh, we postpone the voting on the um, minutes of February 21st, 2023 until our next meeting, which will be in August. Okay. I'll second that. Thank you, Jack. Any further discussion? Okay, then. Uh, Nancy Schumacher. Aye. Barbara DeBiazzi. I'm confused about what, we're, what motion we're voting on right now. To continue the February minutes. To continue the February minutes. Ah, yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Cheryl. Uh, yes. Jack. Aye. Uh, Marilyn. Aye. Okay, that being the case, I don't think there's anything else that we uh, uh, Nancy, you've gone mute almost. You're very surprised. <laughs> okay, I think we've uh, hit most of the points. Is there anything further that people need to yes, put on yes. the plate? Yes, on the matter is not reasonably anticipated. I would like to make a proposal because our full member capacity is seven, but we have we now have an opening, and we have somebody who is an alternate who has actually served us very well and learned learned the job very well. I would propose that we that and I, and I would turn it into a motion to have accepted as a motion, unless you want to have discussion about it first. That we move Barbara Debiasi up to a full member by proposal to the town council, or I think it's the appointments committee we go to, to suggest that she be moved up. And then that goes to the town council for consideration and approval. But oh. do we have that right, Jessica? To, to make the suggest to the appointments committee that she be uh, I, Yeah, I believe that that is correct, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we can continue with the motion, but Okay. Oh, well, I, I would be happy to accept that nomination if that's the case. Okay. I would make that motion with the condition that if we are following the proper procedure. That covers everything. Of course. So, um, okay. I'll second that, Nancy Shoemaker. Thank you. Okay. We're voting to suggest to town council that Barbara become a regular member of our commission. I think it goes uh, to the committee. Excuse me? It goes to the, we make that motion to the appointments committee that they move her up and then that they send it to the town council for her to be picked up. Yes, but we're voting on whether we think is that is an appropriate action. It's just you said that to the town council, we're making it to the to the, uh, to the pro proper procedure appointments committee to town council. I would have asked uh, Jessica to confirm that, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah, I her picture's there, but I don't think she is. But I, I think you're correct that that's the right procedure. But we need to make the recommendation. So I think, or we can make that recommendation. And I think it's appropriate that we do so. So uh, we have a motion, I believe. We have a second. And um, we've had some discussion. So I'm going to ask people to vote on it. Uh, Nancy Shoemaker. Aye. Cheryl Powell. Cheryl, did you vote? Aye. Thank you. Marilyn Fifield. Aye. Jack K. Of course, Jack K. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Barbara. 
Sure, yes. <laughs> and I also vote yes. So Erica, if you'll prepare a letter to that effect, I will be happy to send it to the uh, proper place. Nancy, before we, I have one more thing. I don't want to step yeah. in. All right, let me go. One ahead. more important thing to discuss. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, I was asked when I had my brief moment of uh, being in charge of this commission that, uh, and happily so, uh, that could we allow solar panels to go on a house at 775 Main Street in Pituit? And I didn't know how to answer that. So I asked Emily to, um, Erica, sorry, to ask Elizabeth Jenkins of, of for guidance. I just didn't, so, I haven't heard from anybody. What do we do with something like that? If they're not destroying the building, but I mean, if this was an old King's highway that would certainly go through them. I just didn't, I sort of tabled it because I don't know what the answer is. So could you guide us, Elizabeth? I'd be happy to, and Erica, please jump in. Um, in the uh, chart that we've developed and refined with previous board chairs throughout the year, we have different thresholds. We establish different thresholds um, that that determine what type of review projects need. Um, you know, I think we revisited this a little bit when we did that application for 70 Ocean. Um, you know, some things come to the full commission, some things receive administrative review. So typically, if it's installation of solar panels on a house that's only 75 years old, uh, we do approve those administratively, correct, Erica? If that property is on the national yeah. register, then we send those to the chair for mm -hmm. review and determination as to whether or not it can be administratively approved or it should come be a front of the full commission. So um, mm -hmm. based on the matrix, again, that's been developed and used by staff uh, in coordination with the commission over time, that is our practice on solar panels. Now, in, the, in the past, I can say having been president of this commission several times, <laughs> I have allowed it um, in the majority of cases mm -hmm. because it, it is not considered detrimental. But this house, I, I don't have the form B handy. I believe it was not just 75 years old. I mean, I'm not for or against. I'm just want to make sure we're doing what's right. And it is on Main Street and Katuit. And it was uh, on the front of the house, I believe. So no, it's on the side of the house. Was so it? it was on the left elevation of the front facing of the this house. Is, this is what it yeah. was, and I'm looking at it that way. But so in other yeah. words, this is the front of the house. Yes. Okay. So it's on the side. So the slope yeah. would cover most of it. You would only see a very small portion of it, which is why in my email to you, I had stated it does follow the Secretary of the Interior's guidelines for solar panels. Yeah, right. yeah, they definitely exist. Sure yeah, <laughs> I, did, I didn't want to say anything one way or the other because I just wasn't sure what we were doing. Okay. Oh, definitely. And that's why I sent it to you just to be on the safe side and to make sure because it is on the National Register. All right. I'm not okay. close to the meeting. You are, Nancy. Oh, uh, then I would, uh, oops, Jessica. 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 Okay. There you go. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to uh, remind the the commission, and I know Elizabeth is she knows about this, but just a, a reminder regarding the form Bs for Katuit, and that there's ready and willing volunteers, Mr. Uh, Odins for one, who who would like to wrap up this project, um, and with Erica's help as well. So I hope that we can come to a conclusion on that project. Um, and, uh, and I'm hoping the Historical Commission can help shepherd that through. That would be just terrific. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Apricetti, for the nudge. And we were sorting through some of those form Bs and we just have to finish that. And Sarah Cordia for the commission has been a huge help in connecting us with the right people at MHC. So we'll get both of those through. Great, I appreciate it, thank you. Aren't we lucky to have form Bs? I mean, I, I go back to them. I warn you, everyone, you all or any historical society gives me, I always save them and they're just so valuable in so many ways. And now that the printed word 
isn't as easily found like in our local paper and so on. It's just, it's a great, great thing. Thank you. Okay, I will accept a motion. I'll motion that the, uh, we adjourn. I'll second that, Nancy. I got okay. lots of seconds on that one. <laughs> Let's go. Huh? <laughs> okay, uh, we will vote on that. Nancy Schumacher. Aye. Barbara DiBiazzi. Oh, well oh. said. Aye. <laughs> Once I get it, I'm usually good. You got it. <laughs> Cheryl. <laughs> uh, Jack K. Aye. And Marilyn Fifields. Aye. And I also vote aye. Have a good week, folks. <laughs>